All righty. All right. Well, welcome to all of our participants. We're so glad to have you here. Uh, before we go into our presentations, um, it would be probably great if we introduced ourselves. I am Mrs. Sandora. I am the academic dean in the middle school at TMSA in Cary. This is my second year with TMSA as an administrator. Um, I originally started with them as a teacher when I moved from New Jersey four years ago before moving into school administration. Um, so that's a little bit about me. I have three and a half years of administrative experience and this and then before that, about 12 years, 11, 12 years of teaching. So, and then Mr. Scranton. Um, I am Mr. Scranton. I am the middle school dean of students and student culture. Um, so this is my fourth or fifth year at GMSA. Um, prior to that, I was in the classroom as a mathematics instructor. Um, before coming to TMSA, I was, um, voted teacher of the year at the school I was at. Um, and um, I just, I love working with the kids. Um, it really, really is um, something I'm passionate about. Absolutely. So we are going to run through our presentation. Uh, we do ask that you use the question and answer fe feature. Please know that Mr. Scranton and I will take time at the end of our presentation to go through your questions. So we will start. So our basic mission is here for you. It's to prepare students to become competent, responsible, and successful individuals in a globalized and technology-based society through strong academic programs, school, family, community partnerships, and strong teacher-student relationships. So this is what we strive to do in our classrooms um, in all K through 12 in our buildings, since we are K through 12 for this year. And I can say as a parent of a kindergartner, I, this is something our staff does hold true and our administrative team to make sure that we are really hitting all of these pieces of our mission. This is our current administrative team. As you'll see, Mr. Carr is our principal, our elementary deans, Ms. Hansen and Ms. Lanham, myself and Mr. Scranton, and then our high school deans, Mr. Kobanli and Mr. Smith. A change for next year is that our high school will be moving to the new Apex campus um, where they will be relocating and eventually moving into their own building. So our building will actually be a K through eight building next year in Cary. So that is a change, but for this year, we are a K through 12 building. And then our wonderful support staff, I don't know what we would do without them. Um, Ms. Wood is our administrative assistant and our friendly face you see first in the front, along with Ms. Powell, our school nurse aide, who we can't thank enough for all of her work, especially the past two years. And also Mrs. Bell, who is our right-hand person with power school coordinating, um, enrollment data, or data management systems. And these ladies truly are the glue behind the scenes. Nope. All righty, Mr. Scranton, would you like to take the next slide? Um, sure, so we do have a lot of additional support staff uh, in the building. Uh, we have a full-time school social worker that's K-12 certified, um, a school counselor for K-8, reading interventionists, um, our EC department, exceptional children. Uh, we have one teacher per school level and um, a TA and additional support staff. Um, we also have occupational therapists, speech therapists, uh, school psychologists, and an English language learning teacher uh, that supports our K-8 students. Okay. So as you can see, this is our school performance data for the past um, few years, well, actually for the, since 2013-14. So just something to note when you look at our school performance data um, is that up until 2018-19, we did receive school grades and performance scores from the state. Due to the pandemic, we have not received any um, school performance grades and score reports for the past two years. Um, but as you can see, prior to the pandemic, we were in A-rated school uh, with 2015-16 and 16-17 Oh, as well as 2014 and 15 being our top years, where we not only received an A rating, but we also um, received that kind of A plus rating because we had no gaps in any of our subgroups, which is truly amazing. Um, I, and I can tell you just from looking through our data from the past two years, 
We didn't do any state testing in 2019-20, but last year, despite the pandemic, our students performed extremely well on the state level exams, in addition to our AP um, exams and our RCT and PLTW exams. So despite a very, very challenging few years, um, we have still shown great performance and that's a tribute to our teachers and our amazing students. Okay, so what is a charter school? Um, basically, we are governed by a nonprofit board. Um, we are a public school. We are not a private school. So we just are funded differently and we have a lottery system, which is different from a traditional public school. So when you go through the lottery process, that means that you have applied and put in an application for our school to be put into the lottery and be possibly selected to attend our school. There is no tuition that we require at school. There are no academic eligibility requirements. Basically, we get your child's name, their date of birth and their grade level, and they get placed into our system. And that is all we find out until they are selected. Um, also, we are accountable to DPI through yearly performance goals. We are required to take state exams like traditional public schools, and we are required to meet certain um, things that DPI regularly has all public schools uh, make sure they meet as checks and balances. Anything I missed, Mr. Scranton? Um, no. Not so. All right. Um, do you want to take the next slide? Sure. Um, so why might you want your child to come to TMSA? Um, one, obviously we have a, a proven track record of academic success um, through our A and A plus um, ratings that we've had in every rating cycle since they started giving school grades in North Carolina. Uh, we do have a pretty heavy STEM focus, uh, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. <clears throat> um, uh, our courses are aligned to the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction standard course of study. Um, as Ms. Sandora mentioned, we do have to take the same state test that every um, local school takes at, this, uh, at the end of the year, and we do follow that course of study. Um, we do have uh, technology enriched education. Our teachers are constantly looking for online and um, just ways to use technology to enhance the, the school day. Um, our, our teachers are constantly going to trainings and we're learning new things about ways to teach and our curriculum um, matches that. Uh, we do have opportunities for advancement as well. So if your child is um, in a level of math and they demonstrate that they are ready to move up, we will take that into consideration and make adjustments as needed. Um, we have free tutoring. Our teachers work tirelessly to make sure that our students have access to additional supports outside of the classroom um, and the regular school day. Um, we do have academic support during the day for students that need additional help um, that we identify as, as needing additional supports. Again, that's during the school day. Uh, we have Saturday school. We've got academic teams and just a lot of great things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis. And just, you know, another thing to note looking at our curriculum and our instruction is um, in the county systems, you may find a very scripted curriculum where every school and, and different patches of school are following the same thing at the exact same time, which is very good in some aspects, but our teachers have the autonomy to teach and to be flexible with how they teach and to really foster critical thinking skills. And I think that's one of the things that makes our school such a strong school. Not only are we math, um, math and science focus and STEM focus, but we are also very criti critical thinking heavy with our students and we make them use those skills to adapt because that's what many careers are. So just to kind of taking a look, why else for TMFA? It is truly a family feel. And when we say a family feel, we're not just talking, you know, within the classroom. I mean, you get to know all of the students. Uh, we have currently 300 middle schoolers and I feel like Mr. Scranton and I do a pretty good job of making sure we know all of them um, and being visible and out and about. And that's the beauty of a small school. We offer home visits. Um, we have a wonderful caring staff. A lot of our staff members, um, have connections within the school community, um, similar to me as a parent of the school community, or um, as you know, a parent of an alumni or different things. Um, so that's a really great thing. We have a very diverse student body. Mr. Scranton, again, how many languages and how many different backgrounds do we usually? I know you're good with those. I, I think <laughs> in our 
our last survey for our parents, we had a right around 150 different languages spoken at home. Mm -hmm. So we've got a pretty diverse um, background of students, which we love. Absolutely. Um, so that's a huge plus to our school. Extracurricular activities. We do have offer after school clubs. We are also building our middle school athletics program, which I think is going to be even better once we um, have actual facilities at our new campus that we'll share. Um, it is a very structured and safe environment. Um, even with the challenges of uh, coming back from the pandemic and navigating just, you know, our COVID protocol and also navigating students returning to campuses after being at home for over a year, you can see how much structure, how much more structured and safe um, our environment is for our students. Uh, we promote strong character education for all of our students, and we are a leader in these school. We are working to start to build our knowledge base with that, so we can fully implement. Um, we do have a school uniform policy um, where our students do currently wear blue polos and they can wear khaki or navy or what have you, pants and girls skirts or skorts. Um, and our shorts. So we do have that policy. We are expanding our campus and our opportunities. So as we mentioned, we are building another campus in Apex, North Carolina, which will eventually be a full K through eight building and then also a high school building. But that leads to new opportunities for students in both buildings and more space, which I think we're really happy about after this year, getting one more year of K-12 on one campus. We're all gonna be excited for more space and more ways to give opportunities to our students and staff. Um, and then as I mentioned, we are a leader in these school. So oh. Miss, go ahead, Mr. Scranton. I was just gonna say, um, while we were on the last slide, somebody asked, um, what are home visits? So mm -hmm. we, um, we like to get to know our students outside of school. Um, so we have um, our home visit program <clears throat> would be, um, you would communicate with one or more of your child's teachers and we would arrange to come out and come to your house and hang out for a little bit, see what life's like at, at home. Um, we, as the deans or administrators, we try to go to as many of them as we can. It's not always possible, but we like to try to get out there. Um, and it's just awesome to see the kids. They're so excited to show, you know, oh, hey, this is my, look where my desk is. Or, um, you know, sometimes they'll cook a, cook a meal and, hey, look at what I know how to cook. And it's just a great time to just get to know uh, families a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Scranton, that's a great question. So what do we see for a student at TMSA? What are some qualities that we see in our student population and we'd like to help build our students towards? Well, independent learning and thinking is a huge piece. We'd love to see our students learn independently, think independently and problem solve. It's a life skill that's important. Um, displaying that high level of motivation, even if there are challenges or things in the way, how can um, I keep my motivation up and keep my, my head up and, and keep driving for my goals? Um, showing, a, showing a strong work ethic, um, and we want to see our students that are driven to succeed academically. Um, we are an academic-based school, and we do want to ensure that all of our students are successful and are able to um, reach their goals and then set new goals to hit. Um, exhibit academic strength in math and science, being a math and science based school, um, that is a, a big piece that we do like to see that our students have that enrichment and engagement and interest in those areas. Um, performing well at an accelerated play, pace um, lends itself to all the other ones. Demonstrating leadership qualities, because as we know, it's great to be a strong performing student, but having those leadership skills and those collaboration skills are key. Um, participate in academic and extracurricular activities, both academic and athletic or social extracurriculars. Those are important because it makes a well-rounded student. Um, and plan to be college bound, whatever that pathway would look like for your student. All right, Mr. Scranton, I'm gonna take the math pathways and then, or did you wanna take that? Just since I know no, math is your Okay. All right, so this is the basic um, kind of pathways. Um, we do include fourth and fifth grade on the slide because uh, we do have some students that transition in at fourth or fifth grade in the county system. 
Um, so I think this is helpful to see. Um, I know in the Kalani system, it's the pluses. So you might be taking, um, you know, in fourth grade, you might be taking an accelerated math course. Um, and then once you get into middle school, it might be the math plus or an, an additional grade level above. We do not grade skip like they do in the county system. Um, instead, we choose to accelerate within, and that's a great way of keeping students with their peer groups, but allowing them to move forward with the coursework um, at an appropriate pace. So generally in our fourth and fifth grade, that's when we start to level and accelerate. Um, students can either be in a fourth grade math or an accelerated math in fourth grade, which is a four or five compacted. So they learn both fourth and fifth grade math in one year. Fifth grade is the same. They either do a fifth grade standard level track or they do the six, seven compacted where they're doing sixth and seventh grade math in the year. So where our tracks start to really, really break off is once they get into sixth grade. Um, and just so you know, these tracks aren't set in stone. If students are able to show strong proficiency as in a, a 90, 90th or above percentile on their EOG, in addition to other things like teacher recommendations, um, we do map testing in those areas, then we do advance students within their tracks if they're ready. The only things that we can't advance a student into mid-year or different points are high school coursework. Um, it's a very specific process that we need to do to skip into a high school level course. Um, so with that said, there's our tracks. Sixth graders can either take sixth grade math, accelerated math six, or foundations of math one. Seventh graders take the standard seventh grade level math, foundations of math one, or math one for high school credit. And then in eighth grade, it's either eighth grade math, math one for high school credit, or math two. Um, and then just, just a reminder that um, the, the previous, the fourth and fifth grade pathways, that's what we call ours is either fourth grade math or accelerated. I know in the county system, it may be different lingos. Um, so that's our math tracks. And I, I do think it's um, important to mention in seventh grade, any student that is taking grade level math in seventh grade and scores a level five on their EOG, which is the highest level, is required to be offered to take a high school math course as an eighth grader. Um, so uh, again, that's just another way that if your student is on grade level and they want to advance, um, just you know study everything sixth and seventh grade, take the grade level and then get a level five. And then in eighth grade, uh, they, they will be offered the math one high school credit course. Mm -hmm. So, Expanding on math, um, we have been regionally, state, and nationally ranked in most of our math competitions. Again, the pandemic's put a little bit of a damper on our participation in some, but we've continued going with um, different math competitions. We actually um, are running the AMC8 on Thursday for our middle school students, so it's exciting to see our students still get that opportunity to participate. Here are just some of the math courses and um, opportunities for math competition that we do have here at Team SA. And we do actually run Math Olympiad in the middle school as an elective. And we'll get to that when we look at electives. Um, so our science and STEM curriculum, um, we do integrate um, STC science kits, which is more in the K-5 space, um, Project Lead the Way and Project-Based Learning um, to explore the scientific method and science concepts. Those are the big things you'll see in middle school. We'll look momentarily at the Project Lead the Way, the PLTW as we call it, um, gateway coursework that we do offer in our middle school. Um, and we are a distinguished PLTW school. Um, the goal is to make sure that students study science information through hands-on learning and inquiry. That's our big goal in our science department. Um, there's a lot of science experiments that you'll see, making observations, solving real-world problems, and using different um, tools to go through experiments. Um, <clears throat> and I think our science team works very well collaboratively to give those opportunities for exploration. So basically, here is our PLTW coursework. So it engages engages students in activities that build knowledge and skill areas, including computer science, engineering, and biomedical science. Um, they also empower students to develop essential skills, such as problem solving, critical thinking, and cre critical and creative thinking, communication, collaborating, and perseverance. So in middle school, we offer what we call the gateway courses. So it's basically to give our students kind of the knowledge and give them the exposure to the PLTW coursework. And then when they move into high school, if they choose a specific pathway of PLTW coursework, they have the exposure in middle school to start that elective path. 
So as you can see, um, currently in the Gateway One, we offer this year Flight in Space, Magic of Electrons, and Medical Detective. And in the Gateway Two, we've offered this year Design and Modeling. Um, and it's not on here, but we do offer the Green Architecture, um, which is kind of similar to the Intro to Engineering Design. Um, so those are the courses we offer at this point in time. Um, it's a good elective if your child is interested in the biomed, engineering, or computer science slash cybersecurity pathways, um, because when they get to high school, they can take those courses and then pair them with additional science courses and or AP courses um, on their transcripts, and it really looks strong to colleges. Um, Mr. Scranton, do you want to take the STEM science fair? Sure. Um, we uh, do have a science fair. Um, all fourth through eighth graders are expected to participate in this. And um, we've had some wonderful success from our science fairs. Uh, our top students go on to the regional competitions and then to the state level and possibly even national level um, on the science fairs. Um, the past two years, um, just with the COVID and the protocols and whatnot, um, anybody has been able to enter and they've automatically moved on to the regional round, but we're in the building. Um, we do have um, an, an awesome science fair. There's lots of different categories, biology, engineering, earth sciences, um, and the kids really enjoy getting to explore a topic of um, something that they choose and something that they were interested in. Mm -hmm. Yes, we actually, despite the pandemic last year, we had a finalist at the state level um, in eighth grade last year who competed virtually. Um, so we were really proud of him. Um, Science Olympiad team. So this is one of our academic teams, uh, similar to the math Olympiad and competitions. We do promote science engagement um, along with the science fair. Um, so we offer it from fourth to eighth grade and then also into high school. Um, and they compete against other schools in different science events. Um, fields they study include engineering, biology, geology, and physics. And what's really cool about when they prep for competitions is it's all them exploring their topic, meeting with our, P our science Olympiad teacher, Mr. Pamuk, and making sure they understand what specific inquiry they're going to need to do. And then it's very self-paced, the preparation for these competitions. So it's all on the students to do the engagement, to do the exploration, and to go through the process to, you know, work and prepare for their competition. So very self-paced. Uh, ELA curriculum. Um, in sixth through eighth grade, we currently use um, a lot of novel studies. Um, for example, I know in uh, sixth grade, they're teaching holes right now. Seventh grade is working on the boy in the striped pajamas. And our eighth grade team wrapped up the Odyssey at the end of December. And now we're working on an essay with it. Um, they use a lot of additional supplemental materials, just such as nonfiction texts um, and different short stories and articles to work on comprehension skills. No Red Ink is a grammar related and writing skills that is, um, a, you know, a computer based program that we do utilize to help hit that grammar and writing in different ways. Um, we've worked really hard on doing daily vocabulary work and development in context in our classes this year. So instead of just doing your basic vocabulary worksheet, they're actually working with words in context and gaining an understanding of how to use the word, um, which is really helpful. Um, but we incorporate reading, writing, speaking, and listening, vocabulary, and word study in all areas of our curriculum in English language arts. And then for social studies, um, in middle school, we focus on regional, national, and global similarities, um, economies, governments, geographies, and cultures. So we hit those five main pieces. Um, and students will study the ancient civilizations, US history, and they will also hit state level content in North Carolina. Um, so those are the basic time periods. They start to dabble in those before they go into the high school content. Uh, currently, our electives, as we call them, or our specials, um, all students take physical education and health and technology. Um, that's one course that we do put in. And this year, we put it on a semester-long rotation. Um, it may go back to an A day, B day rotation next year, but we tried something new with that. But all students will take PE and technology. We offer beginning and advanced bands um, for our middle school students, along with chorus, visual arts, 
um, our PLTW coursework that we talked about earlier, Math and Science Olympiad, uh, Stock Market, and then Foreign Languages. Currently, we have Spanish and German on campus. Um, eighth graders can select to take Spanish one or German one for high school credit. Um, but each year, our foreign language department does change and adjust a little bit. Um, but these are just some options. This year, currently, students take their four cores, technology and PE, and then they have two additional electives that they can take. However, we're not sure what the adjustment will be for next year. Mr. Scranton, do you wanna talk a little bit about our academic teams? <clears throat> um, sure, so um, we do have a lot of academic teams um, and these guys rock. They win a lot of competitions, place very highly. Um, they put in a lot of hard work and effort and it pays off. Um, we uh, have math and science Olympiad uh, as an academic team. We also have uh, robotics that's under the FLL, which is first Lego leak. Um, and they just, they, they're amazing. Um, Science Bowl and uh, one of our most popular middle school clubs is FBLA, that's Future Business Leaders of America. And they, uh, this is their first year and they are already gaining a reputation as one of the strongest um, clubs. I think it, I, we've got 45 or 50 of our middle school kids that are um, part of the FBLA. Um, and then that kind of goes into our high school. We've got um, a, a, a high school club that goes, um, that goes into that. That's DECA, um, which is similar, um, but the FBLA allows them to compete against other middle school students. Mm -hmm. Um, in addition, we have middle school student organizations that promote the leadership and service and character ed that we would like to see. Um, we currently have National Junior Honor Society that applications begin for seventh grade students, correct, Mr. Scranton? Um, um, they apply as a sixth grader. But they can um, start in seventh yeah, grade. But, but they start in seventh grade, yes. Right. Yep. <clears throat> um, Student Council, which is offered sixth through eighth grade, um, students are able to apply and to be on our student council. We also do CLP or College Leadership Program, um, an organization with our middle school students as well. Um, so those are just some of our organizations we have. Alrighty, um, middle school athletics, Mr. Scranton, if you'd like to share. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but that's me in the back of that picture there with the girls <laughs> soccer team. Um, so we have uh, boys and girls soccer uh, that we offer. The boys play in the fall and the girls play in the spring. Uh, boys and girls basketball are both uh, a winter sport. They are playing right now. Um, we have co-ed cross country in the fall and girls volleyball as well in the fall. We are hoping to add on baseball and ten tennis maybe eventually, but for this year, it just was not in the cards. We're just glad to see our kids playing sports again. All righty. Um, so this is just some of the long list of events that you'll find at TMSA. Um, everything from career fairs and guest speakers to our annual spelling bee, um, book fairs, STEM fair, uh, community events, cultural festivals, the middle school dances, which I will say a year after no dances, I've never seen such happy middle school kids as when we had a dance. Um, talent shows, robotics competitions, our math and science competitions, parent teeth with Mr. Cara, and band and choir concerts. So there's a lot of different events, and I'm very hopeful that we will soon be in our new normal and we'll be able to have many of these things uh, consistently again. And we also like to have um, community events. So we'll have a fall picnic mm -hmm. where we have um, all, all of our families come together and mm -hmm. enjoy each other's company and have a meal. Um, we, we really try to promote a community um, and uh, we, like to, we like to see everybody. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, just some of our highlights, things that we can kind of brag on, so to speak, about things that we have won awards in. Um, so uh, just a few to rattle off, um, regional and state level science Olympiad competition award winners multiple years. Uh, we were the North Carolina state chess champions one year um, with the AMC math contest 
and the Noetic Math Learning Contest and Math League, as long as the other North Carolina math competitions and TriMath Contest and Math Counts, all of that math, we've got a lot of award winners and students that have scored at high levels. Um, our regional and state level North Carolina Science and Engineering Fair, we've had award winners even through the pandemic. Our FLL robotics team, um, they um, do SumoBot line follower and they also participate in the FLL um, different state, regional and state level. Um, last year during the pandemic, we did still have a team virtually qualify for states. This year, we did have our first in-person regional competition and we had a team as the first runner up. So they would have been the alternate to go to state. So our robotics team, despite the pandemic, still bringing in awards. Um, you can see Odyssey of the Mine award winners, Geography B finalists at, at the state level, Spelling B finalists at the state level, um, state fair competitions and award. Um, again, adding in our FBLA this year, students are already performing at a high level. Um, big things in the classroom, increasing our technology. We do have one-to-one -one access in our middle school classrooms, which has been very helpful. Um, and we're hoping to eventually branch that to one-to-one -to -one, um, devices for students to use at home and at school. Um, our high school is it's a third grading graduating class um, uh, that, that happened last year in 2020-2021. Um, we had a 100% graduation rate as well, which is very exciting despite the pandemic. A new campus is opening in 2023 and 2024 for our high school. Um, so just taking a look at the application process. Um, so as we mentioned, if you are in this webinar, you've applied to the school. However, it does not necessarily mean that you have been selected and are on our rosters for next year. So the deadline um, is February 10th before midnight to put in your application at our school website. Lottery names are drawn on February 14th. The time is to be determined, and we will make sure to result, email the results to all applicants by five o'clock on Monday, February 14th. Um, in addition, uh, we do have the Apex campus opening next year. There will not be any middle school seats in the Apex campus next year, as it will only be a K-5 and a high school space. Um, but as we find more information about the expansion to the middle school for the 2023-2024 school year, we will put out more information. Um, but for next year, the only middle school space among the two campuses will be in Cary. Mr. Scranton, anything I should add there about the application process? Um. No, I think that's um, if oh, if you are interested in applying at both schools um, mm -hmm. and increase your chances of at least getting into one, mm -hmm. um, you would need to create a separate account for that. Mm -hmm. um, that is, um, you would go to tmsaapex.org mm -hmm. and um, go to that uh, application page there and you could apply at Apex as well. Yes. And we can follow up. I don't know if they're accepting applications above fifth grade at this point. Um, I think it's just the Cary campus. But for, again, once we have more information, we would absolutely share that out with prospective yep. families. Um, so just some basics and things you need to know. Triangle Math and Science Academy's website is there for you. Our enrollment email um, is there as well, as well as the school address and our telephone numbers and our faxes. Um, due to pandemic restrictions, um, unfortunately with the current um, uh, Omicron cases and us monitoring and trying to keep our students safe and our staff safe and keep our school running as smoothly, we are only doing virtual tours at this time. We are hopeful that eventually we will move back to in-person tours, um, but the link is there if you would like to take a virtual tour. And at this point in time, if we would like to start with the question answers. Let's see, we'll go ahead. Sure. Yep. I, oh, so I'll start with Mr. Scranton. We'll just go one. I'll do one. You do one. All right. So this okay. is a great one. I've applied to TMSA Carry for my two kids, kindergarten and sixth grade. Do I need to apply separately for TMSA Apex for my kindergartner? If you want to enroll him at the Apex school, yes, you do. So unfortunately, it's not one wait list for the two schools. Eventually there will be two separate K-8 campuses. So if you're going, if you would want to increase your chances for your kindergartner, I would apply at the Apex campus as well. Sixth grader will come to the Cary campus <clears throat> if he, is, he or she is um, accepted. Okay, um, so 
Uh, will students transfer to the middle school in Apex for the 23-24 year if enrolled in Cary for 22-23? No, if you were enrolled in Cary, you would remain at Cary um, when the middle school does open. And I'm not exactly 100% sure how that's gonna roll out. There's been mm -hmm. talks that they're gonna add one additional um, grade level each year. Um, so the 20, 23, 24, they would add sixth grade and then seventh and eighth grade. They've also discussed just opening all grades at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. In any case, there would be a lottery process for those middle school seats at the Apex campus. But if you are mm -hmm. in Cary, you have a spot in Cary as long as you wanna stay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing that they did do for um, APEC, for the APEX campus is they did provide an option for when you do, if you're in the Cary campus for next school year, you can opt when you re-enroll your child after the new year, you can opt to say, I am going to move campuses if you choose to do so. So that's what they've done this year. Um, all right, next question. Great question. How is this different from a regular public school and a science magnet school? So how we're different from a regular public school is uh, two different things. One, um, as I mentioned, with kind of our AIG and our acceleration, we accelerate within the grade level as opposed to grade skipping students or single subject accelerating. Um, the second piece that kind of differs us from a traditional public school is the opportunities for students to advance and engage in uh, different electives and coursework. So in the middle schools in Cary, you have your basic, you're following your, your core classes, um, and then you have your elective wheel. We don't have an elective wheel. We allow students to select electives, um, and then we seat based on grade level priority. Um, with the science magnet schools, kind of similar in that same base. Ours is a lot more autonomy, again, to allow our students to experience different, um, different uh, opportunities in science and math, not only through their, um, their daily curriculum, but also through their extracurriculars and really engage with that um, exploration so they can grow in advance. Anything I should to add there, Mr. Scranton? Um, no, I think we're, I think we're good. Um, list of after school clubs at your school for middle schoolers. Um, that really varies year to year based upon teacher availability. Um, in the past, we've had photography club and yearbook club. Um, we always have robotics, um, science Olympiad and math Olympiad if there's enough interest. We do have those as in school electives as well. So most students that are involved in those take that during the day. Um, We've got all the athletics programs. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities for students after school. Um, next question, how do we see, keep students safe during the pandemic? What are your policies? Great question, because this is, a, is an ever-growing concern. Um, I will say as a parent, I feel very safe and secure with my child being in the school, um, in kindergarten as part of the school year, he was not able to be vaccinated. So that is a plus um, I've experienced. We do have a mask policy and a mask mandate that we've had in place since the start of the school year. Um, and students are only unmasked eating lunch. Um, they are wearing masks on a daily basis. In addition, we have um, the electrostatic cleaners that purify the air in all of our classrooms in our building. Um, our cleaning staff is amazing and they nightly clean our building um, to ensure that everything is clean and as um, clean it possibly can be for our students. In the event of an exposure or if we've seen that we've had several cases in the classroom, the classroom does go through a deep cleaning process as well. Um, I will say, even though despite right now, everybody is seeing rises with Omicron, we have had a very successful time keeping our students in school, keeping our staff exposures down and really protecting our students and staff. Um, and the air filtration system, just so you know, it's the same that they use in a, um, a hospital surgical room. Um, so our filtration is um, really, really, really good. Um, that was one of the upgrades we, we made. Um, so do students use textbooks? Um, they don't carry textbooks back and forth. We do have um, a few textbooks in the class um, that students do use, but it, typically no. Um, our teachers are creating, um, creating lessons that um, are engaging to the students. Um, so for the most part, we don't, but I'm not gonna say that you'll, your child will never open a textbook. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think a lot of our curriculum resources, for example, in math, um, our teachers currently use the open ed resources is a is a huge support and Delta math. Um, all of our math and ELA teachers use IXL as a supplemental resource aligned to kind of their math progress goals and the EOG and EOC coursework. Um, the novel studies to, students are working with text in, in, in uh, depth. Um, our social studies teacher used a specific uh, team, they use a specific history book um, that's kind of more engaging than your traditional textbook where it's really kind of putting it in the way a middle school sees, schooler sees it. Um, so how do we compare to a traditional AIG program? Um, kind of similar to what I was mentioning before. In the county's AIG program, you may see your student pulled out once or twice a week for an AIG class during a, an enrichment time or what have you. Every day we see our students that are at an advanced level being challenged, whether it's through their elective courseworks or the content that they're doing in their core classes. Um, our teachers really find innovative ways to teach our students. So a lot of our students coming in have been identified as AIG or advanced level students. And I truly feel our staff does an amazing job at enriching and growing those students um, to their capabilities. <clears throat> I think I, I think I can hit three of the next four with one answer. Um, <laughs> so uh, to qualify for accelerated or advanced grade level math, um, we look at lots of different data points. Um, we do map testing um, the first two weeks of school. Um, so MAP stands for Measures of Academic Progress. It is a standardized test given by NWEA. And we look at that data. We look at past EOG data. Um, teacher recommendation is part of the process, but it is not the only, um, the only process. Uh, we do have other options for uh, accelerating once your student gets to high school. Mm -hmm. One thing to be very, very, very careful about um, is we don't want to accelerate students beyond where they will be successful. Um, when students in middle school take high school courses, if they do not do well, that goes on their high school transcript. Mm -hmm. And so we've been, you know, we've seen parents that want to push their child into math. Oh, my kid is capable of this. And the data doesn't support it. And we don't want your child to, to basically have their dream colleges eliminated as a seventh grader because they took a high school course and scored a level four. A level four is an okay score. It's not, you know, it's, it's, it's a good score, but it's not, um, it's not the best possible score. So we find sometimes by waiting a little bit and getting a really solid foundation in your math classes um, that that is a better in the long run scenario. Um, typically we're looking for uh, 85th percentile Mm -hmm. to move up one level um, on a standardized test and 93rd, 95th percentile to move up two grade levels. Um, but if they are coming from a Wake County school, uh, we do follow um, where they were at, as long as, again, the data supports it. If your child was taking seven plus was the specific one um, that I got, they would be recommended for math one. However, when they come to TMSA, if we look at their EOGs from last year and they looks like they struggled with the EOG last year, we might make the recommendation um, to, hey, might be better to slow this down. Um, so um, I hope that that answers your questions. And then I'm going to knock out um, some of the questions I'm seeing about um, just enrollment. So as far as the Apex and the Cary campus, I believe at this time we're only accepting applications for middle school students in the Cary campus as Apex will not be enrolling middle schoolers next year. Even though we are spreading and we're moving our high school over to the new campus next year, we are keeping our enrollment at the current status it is right now, which is 100 students per grade level at this time. It doesn't seem as if we're going to be opening up more seats right now. However, once the Apex campus opens up the middle school, both of these campuses will feed into our high school eventually. So there will be seats available, just not this year. Um, so just the Cary campus will have um, three, the three middle school grades, 100 students per grade level at this time. Um, in addition, uh, if you have received this link to view this webinar, it means we have seen your application has been submitted. It does not mean that you're officially enrolled in the school. Um, so, and then finally, another question. Um, 
So if my child child is picked, if you and you are attending the, the school in the fall, um, do you need to complete a brand new lottery for them to move to the APEX school? At this time, no. I know that we did allow parents to re-enroll and up to change campuses for the upcoming school year in the K-5 space. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. And then a final thing about the lottery system, it does not, once the, you've applied for our lottery, it doesn't really matter what point in the year that you do enroll. I will advise that we do enroll. Typically, we enroll our first 20 days of school, and then we do basically at that point in time, unless we have a transfer in or a seat that's become available, we do generally not really enroll at much after that, um, especially um, with some of our students and our coursework, it's best not to enroll mid-year. So we don't generally enroll mid-year. Our recommendation is to just make sure your application is in, and then hopefully you will get selected in the lottery. Um. Real quick, do, do we have orchestra or band? Yes, um, we have beginning and advanced band in six to eight. Um, do we provide private transportation? We live in West Cary. We do have five bus routes um, that we have. However, parents must apply for and that is paid for separately. Um, it is not um, a door-to-door -door bus route. Um, they meet in um, central locations. So you are so responsible for driving your child and picking them up from that central location. But then we do the heavy lifting and take them from, um, it's like a shopping center or um, different places like that. And then um, we, we bring them to school and take them back to that location. Right. I'm going to knock out two here, actually three, actually four. I can knock four out here. <laughs> if you're applying for two different grades, is it a single draw um, or the elementary or middle score gets selected separately? Whatever grade your child is seated in for there um, is what they are drawn for. So it's not one draw per family. So if you have, say, a third grader and an eighth grader, they will be drawn one for the, your one third grader will get drawn that will be in the drawing for that lottery when we do third grade and then the eighth grader will be in the pot for when there's drawings for seats in eight, um, eighth grade. It's not one drawing for family and sometimes we do have a situation where one family member gets in at one grade and the other does not. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you select are selected in our lottery, do you lose admission in your Wake County based school? only if you choose to accept your seat. So once you accept your seat and you start the process um, at the end of the school year, you would then the paperwork will be submitted by our um, data manager to start the enrollment process. So we have your records and we can enroll your child in our school. Um, so you would lose that seat at that time. What it would mean if you go back into the county system, that I don't know because as a parent in Wake County, I'm still trying to figure out what my base school is. <laughs> yeah, if, um, if, if it's your base school, mm -hmm. that's your base school. So you mm -hmm. always can go to your base school. If you were at like a magnet school or someplace that was other than your base school and you had been selected for that, you would lose that seat. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'll knock out the next two real quick. Um, yeah. One question, no baseball teams. We try to offer baseball every year. Um, this year, we only had like five or six um, students that said that they were even interested in playing baseball. Um, we'd love to offer baseball. We just need more baseball players um, in order to be able to do that. Um, do we have any animal science centered electives or clubs? I know that um, in a high school, Mr. Mr. DB teaches uh, animal science elective. Um, however, again, with the expansion and a little more space, who knows what we'll be able to offer in the middle school next year. So I believe mm -hmm. PLTW Medical Detectives does some stuff mm -hmm. with, um, with animals <laughs> and trying to um, <laughs> figure out different things there. You know, it's almost like CSI cold case, um, but they do mm -hmm. do some animal stuff. Um, there. Mm -hmm. um, so next question I think I can take, take is uh, the grading. So at this point, we are not standard based in six through eight. I know we are standard based in K through three. Um, we do a traditional grading scale with um, obviously 100 being a max and zero being the lowest um, and a 60% is and above is passing. Um, so our 
Our teachers do, um, at this point in time, 80% of a student's grade is summative assignments, um, which is not just tests and quizzes, it's projects, it's um, essays, it's a bunch and a wide variety of things. Um, and then we have formative assessments, quick checks, homework, classwork is 20% of the grade. Um, and we do encourage, we're working on aligning our teachers, not only um, to look at skill mastery within their grading policies, um, but also to kind of flesh out, you know, building work habits versus um, grades assessing mastery. So that's a little snapshot there. So if, if I could just jump in real quick, guys, <laughs> we're up to 77 unanswered questions and we've only got about 10 minutes left um, in this webinar. So if we do not get a chance to answer your questions um, in the next 10 mm -hmm. minutes, please make sure to reach out to um, to one of us and we will mm -hmm. do our best to get back with you within 48 hours. Um, mm -hmm. As long as it's Monday through Friday at say about noon-ish. Um, if you email <laughs> us on Saturday morning at eight o'clock, you may not hear from us until Monday or Tuesday the following week. Yeah, um, but we're going to try to get um, as many as possible. Um, so um, is each grade level adding an additional class this year. We actually in middle school expanded to maximum capacity two years ago. Um, so right now our K through five um, are at 75. Our high school is our, excuse me, our middle school is already at 100 per grade level. Um, so that being said, sixth grade will be the, will have the most spots open, especially with um, some of our fifth graders, um, who may not be coming back to TMSA, but there's automatically 25 spots open um, from outside, plus any students that have chosen um, to, to, to go somewhere else because our fifth graders don't have the option to transfer to Apex at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you, Mr. Scranton. Um, availability of seats in seventh grade, I'm gonna be very honest, I'm not sure. Depends on how many of our students re-enroll. Um, and then kind of going to some academic questions here, the quality of education, um, is it because of teaching staff compensated better than the public schools? Honestly, I think our uh, central office staff has done a fantastic job in making our salaries competitive. Um, as a former teacher who left the public system um, to be in charter, I think Mr. Scranton and I are both in the same boat. We can agree it's the autonomy to teach students and to be flexible and to promote critical thinking and engagement. And I think that's what really makes our staff stand out, um, that we are able to support them and say, hey, you wanna take on a project to assess these standards that will be on an EOG or EOC, go for it. I want to see how you, this works out. Let's work on it together. Um, whereas in the county system, you may find more of a scripted curriculum um, that I know we have both had to follow. Um, and then how do we support students who are not operating on grade level math? Do we accept those students? So as we stated before, when we see your child uh, or they get, select, get selected in our lottery um, for enrollment, we see their name their birthday and their grade. We see nothing else about them. Um, so we are not able to view their academic re records until you have accepted the seat and we start the process of transferring records over. Um, again, that generally new students aren't fully enrolled into our system at Power School until July, the beginning of July, just because they have to be released from their current, current school. Uh, Mr. Scranton, do you wanna take the next few? Um, sure. Um, so uh, extra seats added in carry. There will be extra seats K through five, as I mentioned before. Um, middle school, we are already um, at 100 per grade level. Um, our class sizes, um, we try in a perfect world to have 25 for each class. We have four social studies classes per grade level, four science, four math, four ELAs. Um, we cap it at 27 typically. Um, so that would be the largest class. Um, our elective classes, um, some are a little bit smaller, some are um, a, a little bit more popular. So, um, but we, we, we aim for 25. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we, we have bus transportation. Um, Link for virtual school. Um, at this time, we don't offer a set virtual school, um, but we do offer a virtual tour, which I just shared in the, um, in the chat. Um, 
um, COVID policies in, uh, in place. Um, we do have COVID policies in place. Right now, we are like every other uh, school in the area. We are all seeing COVID cases increase, but we are very, um, I can't thank our nurse aide, Ms. Pell, enough for all she is doing to make sure that we are adhering to policies um, and our staff for being very, very good about our policies. Um, Pre-high school math, eighth grade math. Yes, math eight or foundations of math one are the courses that we take prior to doing. Um, math one is the first uh, course that students would take in, um, in the high school pathway of math. Um, so next question. I am not sure how you could possibly apply to TMSA from the Wake County website. Um, if you do want to apply, you would have to um, apply from the TMSA website. Um, if you are selected in the lottery, then you will get an email asking whether or not you want to accept. Um, now, uh, next question. What if you have more than one child and only one gets a spot? Um, that child will be seated. Any siblings that are not selected in a lottery um, move automatically to the top of our waiting list. So mm -hmm. if a spot were to become available, um, now, when I when I say the top, you know, we could have four or five siblings, um, you know, so so your child might be a sibling, but we also have other families that have siblings. So depending upon where they were ranked in the lottery. So if another family, let's say, was 70, 70th on the list and you were 71st on the list, they would be just ahead of you as far as moving up, um, moving up to there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to knock out the next few, Mr. Schrenn. OK, so. If your fourth grader gets into Apex and your eighth grader gets into Cary, how does drop off and pick up work? Um, we are providing transportation because we do have families that are currently in that boat where they will have one student on one campus. So transportation will be provided between the schools and we will share that out. Um, if you're relocating from a different state, you can absolutely still be a part of the enrollment process. We would request the records from your current school. Um, let's take a look. Um, academic teams, they do meet either, sometimes they're robotics, science Olympiad and math Olympiad currently offer as a 50 minute class period, but they also do meet additional time outside of the day. Um, so, um, there is the option to take those classes during the day. And then if you would work that out with the club advisor, if it's a situation where your child could not attend, that would be something they would ask for. So yes, you do have to create a separate account in order to apply on the Apex website. You can only apply to one school with one account, um, but just create a new account. I think you have to use a different email, not 100%, but I'm like 95% that you have to use a different email address um, to create the second account, but you do have to have two accounts to apply for both campuses. Ivy Lee ex college acceptances. Um, I know we've not had a student um, officially go to an Ivy Lee school. You we can. have UPenn. That's what I was going to say. We've had a Penn acceptance, right, Mr. Scranton, this year? Yes. We and we currently have two yeah. on the waiting list at mm -hmm. Harvard. They applied for mm -hmm. early action and were put on the wait list. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So um, we've had students at um, Stanford, Duke, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, aren't technically Ivy League, but they're in that same same vein. Um, we have one um, student accepted not only into a female student, not only accepted to NC State, but into the honors engineering program, which is a big feat for a female as well last year. Um, uh, honors for courses. So in middle school, we are not able to give an honors weight to a coursework. However, the fact that a student is taking a middle, a high school math course in middle school carries its own weight. Um, so it does not get the honors weight that you would in the high school setting. However, once a student moves into high school, they will get the honors weighting for a um, course. However, please know that colleges do look at the unweighted GPA as well without the honors credits. Um, but they do not have an honors course description for middle schoolers. Um, if you accept the lottery, if you are accepted to the lottery, no, you do not automatically get an unenrolled from Wake County. We would go through the process of you would have to accept your seat and the unenrollment wouldn't happen until the end of the school year. Um, are all subjects taught at an AIG curriculum level? Um, so technically AIG's curriculum is more of kind of that innovative and creative thinking. All of our core content courses are taught at a level where they're rigorous 
and that students are promoting, they're having to use critical thinking skills. So you're going to see ELA students reading a wide variety of texts um, that promote engagement and strong crit critical thinking. Um, you're going to see our social studies and our science classrooms doing a lot of hands-on collaborative projects that are at an advanced level. Um, but there is not a set AIG curriculum that we ask all of our teachers to follow in the core classes. Um, so bus transportation to Apex, it is my understanding that our buses will serve both campuses. Um, they will drop off at TMSA first, and then they will um, continue on to Apex and then drop the students off at the Apex campus. Um, we do not have a debate club in middle school currently. We do have one in high school, um, but a student is also welcome to ask a teacher to support a club. Um, and if they're able to get a teacher rep to support, they can start it. Um, yep. Electives are extra courses that our students take that um, are promoting engagement and kind of that exploration. At this year, students take two additional electives. However, I'm not sure what next year will be. Um, and if you're applying for the sixth grade campus, the only campus you can apply or sixth grade seat, you can only apply to the Cary campus. Average number of open middle school seats in Cary depends on our enrollment and it depends on how many students are coming back next year. So that's an answer I don't feel comfortable giving just because we don't know what our returning numbers will be for next year. But there are more than six, in sixth grade um, than seventh and eighth typically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there are. Um, I completed my application for Cary. I went to the APEX site and it's directing me to the submitted application for the Cary campus. Um, if you're applying for a middle school grade level, that's because you probably cannot apply for the middle school grades and APEX, yes. Um, student teacher ratio for sixth through eighth grade, including seventh, is 25 students to a class about. Um, after school care, we are affiliated with the YMCA um, and students are bused to the YMCA. Um, lunch interaction policy. Uh, so currently, Mr. Scranton, you want to take that one? Sure. Um, so currently, we do not have a cafeteria. We ran out of room and our cafeteria was converted to classrooms. The plan is once um, Apex opens that we will have a cafeteria back again. And so the students would eat in the cafeteria this year. They are eating in classrooms in small groups. Um, so there's uh, 25 per class. Uh, we have an hour at lunch, they eat for 25 minutes and then they transition to outside and we have recess for 25 minutes. In the event of severe weather or it's just too cold, <laughs> um, we do go into the auditorium and um, sometimes we have assemblies. If we need to um, have school assemblies, we'll do those on those days. Um, or if we don't have any assemblies planned, the kids just hang out and talk and chat and um, some of them bring cards and play games. Alrighty, so just some other questions that I see coming in. I mean, if you have applied for the Apex campus for the upper grades, just know that we're not enrolling there next year. So just double check and make sure that you didn't apply for the Cary campus because they're not enrolling next year. Um, just some other questions I'm seeing. Um, good one about EC. Do we provide services for students with IEPs and how are they serviced? Um, we are required as it, by NCDPI to provide the services for any student with an IEP and make sure we are implementing the IEP exactly like it is done in the county. So if your child comes in, um, our uh, data manager does let our EC team know that a new IEP has come in if your child does have one. And then our IEP team will reach out to schedule an initial meeting if needed. Um, and then all IEP information will be shared with teachers. Students do receive any push in and or pull out service that they're provided through EC along with their testing um, and classroom accommodations. So we are required to follow those as the state um, makes us. So the, the textbooks that teachers do use um, typically are available digitally. Um, so we use um, Schoology as our le learning management system. So assignments and things um, are posted on there. Um, yes, students are allowed to make new clubs. They just need a teacher advisor. We love to have our student-led clubs. Um, they just have to find a teacher that um, to supervise while they are on campus. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out. Um, so food court meal options this year, we do not in the past, we've used something called My Hot Lunch where students could order a lunch and it was delivered from a different restaurant each day. Um, but without a cafeteria this year, um, we do not have that um, option. Uh, when we did have the cafeteria, we did have a vendor that came in, a caterer and um, they could buy lunch that way. 
Okay. Um, just some other questions that I'm seeing. Um, enrolling your student in eighth grade, do we need any recommendations? No. So we won't, we would just see that you're enrolling your child for eighth grade and their name and their birth date. Um, so, and then if your child is currently in sixth grade, please make sure you enroll them for seventh grade. Do not enroll them for sixth grade again. Um, I'm trying to see some other questions that I saw. Bus um, transportation information mm -hmm. should be on our website. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You can look there um, mm -hmm. if you need bus transportation information. Um, again, yes, the parents do pay for the buses. Um, that is um, that is something that the parents pay for that want to use the buses. Um, yes. So um, if you, uh, I saw a question um, about if you've already submitted an application for your K-5 student, you would just go on and log on to our website and submit an application um, for the Cary campus. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Um, and then a lot of questions about, do we know how many students are going to be enrolled or how many seats are available? Just as a reminder, until we receive our word from our data manager, which is not until late in the, or not late in the spring, but until we get right up to that enrollment date of who's coming back, we, it's kind of an open enrollment process. So there's a shot, the lottery happens, and then you may receive a call in the spring or the summer that a seat has become available and your child is next on the wait list. Um, so we really don't have a gauge of how many seats we have until that whole process is complete. Um, um, swim team, we have a high school swim team, um, or we have in the past, I don't know if they competed this year, but we have had a swim team in the past, but only for high school. I don't think it's available for middle school. Um, I'm, somebody asked, what is the process for a child that has been homeschooled? I'm not sure what process you are talking about. Please reach out to one of us directly and we can mm -hmm. um, further clarify on that one. Um, mm -hmm. TMSA is a, a traditional calendar. However, we typically start earlier than the county system on the traditional calendar, but we also end earlier as well. Um, so I think we've gotten that. I think um, question again um, about siblings only. I did see two questions about I have twins. So if you do have twins that are in the same grade level and one is selected, the other one is also automatically selected in. That is just for twins. If you have siblings, so um, say you have a sixth grader and an eighth grader is what I'm seeing. If the sixth grader is accepted in, there's a shot that the eighth grader will not be accepted in or vice versa. However, you are welcome to, you know, keep an eye on the wait list. Your child that didn't get accepted does get bumped to the top with that sibling priority. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, link in our emails for enrollment. Uh, when we send out our presentation, if you have not currently enrolled, we will send out the link for enrolling again um, when we send the presentation out. Um, um, if your student is, um, already in an AIG program, um, we do look at their, uh, their standardized testing before coming in. Um, so I'm sure to be accepted into that AIG program, they already have demonstrated that they are proficient and 99 times out of 100 continue to do so. So that shouldn't be a problem. Um, if you're moving to North Carolina, again, yes, you can apply. Um, and school day starts at 7.55 and ends at 3.15 currently. Um, that most likely will change a little bit for next year so that uh, we can accommodate the buses that transport students between the two campuses. Mm -hmm. um, again, we do not offer lunch this year. Um, once we have a cafeteria back um, and we get past all this COVID stuff, I, I can, um, I can say that yes, we will. We will again look at um, having lunches come in. Um, okay. uh, yes, we do assign homework. Um, we mm -hmm. try to make sure that it is a reasonable amount of homework. Um, mm -hmm. We don't want kids going home and spending four or five hours. We want them to have a chance to be kids. But yes, you can expect your students to have homework. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of taking a look. Uh, if you have a specific question about filling out an application 
For both campuses for elementary, that is something that I would reach out to our enrollment for. Um, you shouldn't put two, um, you can't put two applications in for one school. So it's one application per student. However, if you're doing both schools and you're having difficulty, um, please reach out um, to, I can just put the two emails in the chat, our enrollment one, the other one is info at TMSA. Um, the other one is, uh, uh, Mr. Scranton, can you share that one again? I'm sorry, which one? Um, that is our TMSA enrollment. The other one is info for TMSA Apex. Um, I am not sure. It's um, I know it's TMSAapex.org yes. is their website, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure where to go to. I believe for, it's um, info at. I can, I can follow up with them to see, but I know that there is a specific email that parents are able to use. I can put the website on there. All their information is there. So it's TMSA Apex. Yeah. Um, so uh, the, the lottery is filtered. So if you apply twice, um, one of them will be deleted. Um, we are trying to get our library back again. We ran out of space, so um, we converted our library to uh, classrooms, but once uh, everybody moves out, we are planning on um, on putting the library back and the cafeteria, as well as a teacher's lounge. We don't have a teacher's lounge this year either. Mm -hmm. um, we converted that into classrooms as well. So we're all making sacrifices to make sure that students are getting what they mm -hmm. need. Um, if students struggled in uh, specific subjects, we do have math and ELA academic support during the day. Um, that is an elective course, but it's not really elective because we elect that you need to take that course um, because you're struggling in that area. And then, as I said, our teachers are great at offering tutoring and additional help and assistance outside of school. Mm -hmm. um, you do have to reapply each year. If you do not get in this year and you are still interested, you would need to reapply um, for the following school year. Mm -hmm. um, how do we compare to Thales? So Thales uses the classic education model, um, which is different from what we use. In addition, Thales is not required to follow the North Carolina standard course of study as a um, a private school. Um, you know, we are similar in size and numbers, I, I would think a little bit, but it's the type of curriculum that we utilize and the alignment to the state standards and, you know, the rigor that NCDPI holds us to. So that's something that I would say is a big difference between us and Thales. Um, uh, that I would be very mindful um, as we do follow not only the North Carolina standard course of study, we are pre-AP for all school and then an AP. Um, and we've done very well in our AP uh, level coursework. So it's something our middle school builds into. And we also are a tuition free charter. Mm -hmm. so, exactly, um, got you. Thank you, Mr. Scranton. That's a big yep. one. <laughs> um, No, if you applied to both locations, Cary and Apex, that is not considered applying twice. Mm -hmm. um, what would be considered applying twice is, um, you know, if, if each parent were to create a separate account and try to enroll your student um, two times at the same school. Uh, but if you applied at two different locations, that is fine. That is not twice. Um, Ms. Andorra, the twins again. What was yes. The um, so if you have twins, please put in for both children. You need to do an application for each child because they are two separate children. Um, but then that's kind of that rare case scenario. If one gets selected in the same grade level, the other one automatically is enrolled. Um, and then the last question, I applied to the Cary location, but my house is very near to the TMSA location. So I'm guessing TMSA Apex. Um, just because you applied and carry, it's not a shared lottery system. Um, that doesn't mean you're a guaranteed a seat in the Apex. The only time that both campuses will eventually merge is once students are in ninth grade. Um, so our ninth through 12th high school, the vision is that both schools will be feed into our high school moving forward. So I would make sure if you want a spot in the Apex location for at least the third grader for next year, please apply there as well. However, there aren't seats at the campus for seventh grade next year as it's only a K-5 space. And Mr. Scranton, I am impressed. We ran about 10 minutes over, but we answered all questions. <laughs> 135. <laughs> so um, uh -huh. at this point, we are gonna wrap it up. We thank you guys for being here tonight and your interest in uh, Triangle Math and Science Academy. Please, if you have um, any more questions, mm -hmm. uh, 
reach out to us. Um, our uh, emails are available email on the website. Um, okay, Miss Sandora will share both of our emails. Um, it's pretty easy. It's just the first initial of our first name and then our last names and at tmsacademy.org. Please reach out to us and yeah. we will try to answer as many more questions as you have. Um, mm -hmm. At this time though, we are going to shut it down for the night. It is 7.15, um, so we are 15 minutes over time. Again, this presentation will be shared on our website once it downloads and then we upload it back to our website um, and as well as the slides. So if you did not get the link to the school tour earlier, um, the slides will be shared as well and you can click on the link then. Um, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys. Thank we you. really appreciate it. Um, I can say I, I worked in county schools um, and in public schools um, for for many, many years prior to making mm -hmm. the jump to TMSA. And I love it here. Um, I think it's a great place mm -hmm. for students, a great place for uh, for teachers. And if selected, I'm sure that your child will love it here, too. Yes, and, and I can attest to it as a parent um, and as a, an employee. It's been a pleasure working with the TMSA family um, for the past two years and also my time teaching. And as a parent, I couldn't be happier with the education my kindergartner has gotten this year. He's truly had an amazing first year of school. So thank you, everyone. We appreciate you all coming. With that being said, thank you, guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Mm -hmm.